Hi everybody, so we've finished our pancake generator, it's an axial flux generator, if you see how thick it is. And of course in a different video we finished these blades. And now what we're going to do is test the blades. And remember, they have to go in that orientation with an offset of 60 degrees to each blade. So we just shove them on and we can hold that up in the wind. The blade has a crease in it and that's the wind direction, it should come from that side. If it comes from that side it will actually work just not as well as it works if it comes from that side. So on this quick test, all we're really gonna do is stick this on a broom handle, exhibit A, and hold it up in the air and see what happens. So obviously what we could really do with is a swivel joint down here and a tail so that it would actually self-direct it. Uh, and that's easy enough to do, but I'm quite excited by this and I wanna see what it does. We are clearly up on the hill and because we're up on the hill we've got no meters so we are going to use this to give us an idea then we'll see if it's working then we'll go back to the lab anyway let's get this up in the air okay i feel a bit like a medieval wizard really with a wizard staff but we're going to stick this up in the air and we're hopefully we'll get it to spin now i'm going to put this on it remember the turn on voltage for this is about 25 volts and it draws about 100 120 milliamps depending on how bright it gets is going to give us an idea of how much we're generating of course we really need to take measurements but i can't tell you how annoying it is when you do that and people go it doesn't work in the real world. So I like to bring it out in the real world and then we'll take measurements after. So let's get it up in the air and see what happens. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's lighting. Wow. You can, that, that is wow. Look at that, that's lighting beautifully actually. Whoa. <laughs> Man, that's really cool. Wow. Isn't that lovely? That's beautiful. It is actually, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm holding a strimmer. <laughs> One of these blades come off, it's going to cut me in two. <laughs> It'll be a nasty accident. Luckily, we strengthened all of these up because that is some speed. Okay, let's take a wind reading. Okay, the wind really isn't that strong. It's going between sort of 3.3 meters per second and 2.5 meters per second. Yeah, it got to 3.4. Now you might have noticed halfway through that video, that looked like it stood still. And that's because the speed that that was turning was more or less equal to the speed at which it was being filmed. Now I looked up the frame rate, it's uh, 25 frames per second, meaning that was turning at about 1500 RPM and it was turning 1500 RPM in about a three or four meter per second wind. That's incredible. Now, normally with a rotor like this, then you're limited by the bets limit. There's nothing you can do about it, it's just the physics of everything. And everybody is searching for a way to beat the bets limit because you can improve the efficiency of a wind turbine. You'll never do it with just a rotor like that. But you can do it. You can do it if you do things like use a duct because a duct collects a greater area of, uh, a greater area of wind and so you are effectively using a larger blade if you like and so it looks like you're beating it. Another way of beating it is with something like this, a dual rotor. These dual rotors are so efficient that they're in fact the hot topic in wind research at the moment. If you put in dual rotor wind turbine into a Google search you'll find a lot of information about this particular kind of wind turbine and how good it really is and we saw that. We saw that when we were able to light up that LED and I did measure it, it was about 30 volts and it was about 100 milliamps, which is incredible when you think about the wind speed and how tiny this little wind turbine actually is. 
So if you're looking for a wind turbine, then I can suggest that dual rotor would be a way to go. Now this thing is a little lethal. I mean, you know, it's spinning blades, basically. What I'm interested in is having it that way up. Having it that way up in a Darwin wind collector, I think, would be an awesome um, solution, really. And this is a nice compact design for doing something like that, but it has very good performance. Now, I've also replaced the foot here. You might notice that's a bit sturdier. That's because the f I broke the foot putting it on the broom handle. So I've redesigned the foot and I've updated the uh, Thingiverse file for it with the new foot in there. But that, I'm really quite pleased. It was an exceptional result. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.